video of purple tiles and pieces. Today I thought we'd do something a little bit different and be a bit more vocal and talk you guys through exactly what's happening here with these various piles of parts you are about to see. As there's a lot to get through today I'm just going to give a quick overview of the project and then focus on the engine and transaxle for the car. The body and chassis can be left for other videos. So enough pointless talk let's get going. Now before we get started Let's get one thing clear, this is not a real Lamborghini Consage, it is a replica, kit car, tribute, recreation, whatever you want to call it, but it's not real. I'm just saying that because I know some people would have a heart attack when they see the new engine going into this car, I'm thinking it's a real Lamborghini. However, for a replica, it looks pretty good, with only a few small signs that give away its fake status, but we'll get to those more in another video. So this car was bought in pieces and essentially in need of a full restoration, save for the paint which was about 90% okay. It did arrive with a very tired Ford 302 V8 in the engine bay, which was down there. And pretty early on the decision was made to replace the engine. We figured that since we were going to be rebuilding the car, essentially from the ground up, we may as well put a better engine in at the same time. Now a lot of replicas use V8s or even V6s, but not many go the V12 route. I figured that since the car looks pretty good, we should source a V12 just to make it a bit more accurate. Now there are a few V12 options to choose from. So BMW had a V12 back in the 7 Series and the 90s. Jaguar have a V12 and so do Mercedes. However, being a JDM guy, that means there's literally only one engine that would do, since there's literally the only production V12 from Japan. And that is the Toyota 1G ZFE. That's somewhere up over there, so let's go take a closer look. So yes, you heard that correctly, Toyota did make a V12, and here it is. It's known as the 1G ZFE, which is a 5 litre V12 from the second generation Toyota Century. Now if you don't know what the Toyota Century is, it's essentially a luxury limo that was used by high ranking business people, government officials, and even the Japanese royal family. So the V12 was only found in the second generation, which had a remarkably long production run of close to 20 years actually, starting in 1997. However, there were fewer than 10,000 cars made during those 20 years. Now being a V12, you'd think this has a huge amount of power and you'd mostly be wrong. This engine is officially rated at only 276 horsepower, which conveniently fits right in the range of the gentleman's agreements that the Japanese manufacturers had at the time. However, tests have shown the real figure is probably closer to 300 horsepower. What this engine does have a lot of though, is torque, around 480 newton meters to be precise. I'm not sure what those are in pound foot, but I'll put the figure up on the screen. Also, the second generation Century was a heavy car, weighing in at over two tons, whereas the car it's going into now is around 800 kgs less. So I think the power to weight ratio will be quite decent. So now, this particular engine was bought sight unseen on everyone's favorite buying platform, which was Facebook Marketplace. And as an added bonus, arrived with the original bin plate of the car the engine came from. I took this as an opportunity to run a car VX report on the car and it came back with this. Now this is the exact car that housed the engine and it appears it was scrapped due to some minor accident damage because it certainly didn't look too bad in the photos. I was a bit concerned to see the mileage was 340,000 kilometers but we have opened up the engine and everything remarkably looks good. Additionally, we've done compression tests on each cylinder and they're all good and the engine turns over fine and has oil pressure. Also, these engines sound pretty amazing with the custom exhaust setup and we obviously want to be able to hear that V12 scream so we'll make sure it's getting exhaust made up that will do the job. And just a small point to note here is that the engine runs on two ECUs, one for each side of the engine. We're obviously going to have to change that for the setup we're going for and our store investigating options. There will also be a fair amount of custom engineering to do to make this engine work in this car. So this isn't Forza Horizon where you just press some buttons and your car has a new engine. However, I'll get into those in more detail in another video. This is just meant to be an introduction. Now you'll notice there's something missing on the engine, the gearbox. 
This engine originally came native to a four-speed automatic. I think it was changed to a six-speed around the mid-2000s. However, automatic obviously won't do for what we want. And while this engine came with a gearbox, it's been removed and sold already. The transax that came in the car downstairs was a very old Audi 016 unit that honestly looked equally as shit as the Ford engine. It's actually over there somewhere. And no one wants to buy it. So we knew that it had to be replaced as well. After many months and many searches later, thanks to the Ford GT40 forum, we set our sights on finding it was either an Audi 01E or Audi 0A2 unit, as they seem to be the best choice for being reasonably affordable as well as durable enough to handle the nearly 500 newton meters of torque. So after a few weeks, a company here managed to source this, which was an Audi 0A2 unit. Now I'm referring to this particular transaxle as an Audi unit. However, it was found in various other European market, Audi, VW, and Skoda models. So this exact one came from a C6 A6 wagon with a 2.7 TDI engine putting up 380 Newton meters of torque. Therefore, I'm sure if it can handle that in the heavy A6, it can handle 418 Newton meters on the car weighing substantially less. Now, this is a six-speed manual, whereas the original Kuntosh is a five-speed manual, but we'll have to sacrifice some originality for durability. Now also just a small side note about this transaxle, we never got any cars with it here in South Africa. We did get the Audi 0A3 and the S4, but that's a Quattro setup. This is obviously two-wheel drive. And this unit's also a very close relative of the GA620 unit found in the Porsche Cayman. However, the ratios are slightly different on that setup. And since we just mentioned the Cayman, it's worth noting that this car will have the exact same setup as the Cayman, which is mid-engined with a transaxle at the rear, which is a common setup for replicas. Now obviously an Audi part doesn't bolt up to a Toyota engine, so we're having an adapter plate fabricated here, and we're still going through the clutch and flywheel setup options, but more of that to come in another video. Right, that's enough of an overview for this video. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy seeing this project unfold, as these are still early days and we have a long way to go. So in the next video, we'll be doing a closer look at the body and giving more detail about that. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned if this is something you're interested in. See you then.